Blessings, beloved. Let's get into some of the terminology that's used with the Solar Cosmic Christ. The Solar Cosmic Christ is aptly named because it is a solar template for beingness. It is a fractalization of source into form, and it trickles down through the dimensions, through the universe, galaxy, solar system, planetary consciousness, and right into humanity. And we have a very unique experience as a human because we're able to actually embody, reactivate the crystalline structures within us, which are in between the cells, and then they start affecting, they become, they're etheric, and then they start affecting the carbon-based structure and turning it into a carbon-silica structure as we ascend. That's what all the expansion exercises are about. You're expanding the particles of your consciousness so that light can get in between the cells and start penetrating the cells and changing the cells. We're engaging in evolution in a very unique way. And on top of engaging with that crystalline consciousness, we're actually embodying a solar logos, a template. A logo is a template for a certain kind of beingness in form. And it's fractalized, represented in all these different structures as the tube torus trickles down into form, into a human form. And then we're reuniting with all of that through the expansion exercise so that we become aware of not just our higher levels, but we actually unify with the sun the central suns, the great central sun, the universe source, all the way back to source. This is symbolized in the tree of life, which shows us the Christic path. The Christic path is the middle path. It's symbolized in the tree of life because it's the only part of the tree that goes all the way back to source. The two distractions, this is classic spirituality, so sorry if it's a repeat for some of you, but in classic spiritual teachings, you've got these two forces that are always trying to distract you from the Christic path, from the middle path. The middle path is balance. It's a continual searching for source, but still aware of balancing the, uh, and honoring the grounded experience. So you're still working in the world, you're still in service to others, while you're working on your spirituality. And the forces that oppose that, or rather try to distract you, are considered luciferic. So luciferic distraction would be anything that tries to pull you into constant ec ecstatic practice, constant spiritual practice, drugs, th things like that, where you're constantly trying to escape this reality. And the luciferic influence is something that's, that's quite common in spirituality. Um, some people actually honor that as their own spiritual path because the Luciferic influence is constantly trying to get you out of the illusion. It says, oh my God, get out of form, get off the wheel of karma. This is no place for you. And it's consistently like, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. And it sees, um, of, although Lucifer is a, is a being of great light, it's not grounded in the, it doesn't honor the human experience. So it can be very distracting. It's, uh, it's something that continually tries to pull you into consistent uh, spiritual ecstasy, consistent escapism. It's very, very related to escaping the grounded reality and your life kind of goes to hell, but your spiritual practice is amazing. <laughs> so it's, it's when, we're, when we're practicing balance in the Christic path, you've got that force that's constantly going, more, 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 I want to es escape this reality, I want to just constantly be in this, this state of, of bliss, and it kind of ignores and, and doesn't honor the grounded experience, nor is it in service to others. It's, all, it's consistently in service to self and the... And the um, practice of, of uh, self-ecstasy and self-bliss and self-joy. So it's a, more of an escapist kind of path. The other force that pulls you away from the Christic path is, uh, is called Aramonic. It's also um, related to Asatan. It's Satanism. So it's pure materialism. So the other force that pulls you away that would be you know opposite spirituality um, or an ecstatic practice would be there is no God. It's an all just material, get as much money, get as much stuff as you can. And it turns into service against others because it's very self-centered. 
it's very self-centered. All, all it cares about is, uh, is materialism and control, power over others, all of those things that, that have been I mean, it was a very strong influence on our planet for a long time of materialism and trying to control others and manipulate others and everything. That's not considered an aramonic influence. And this is represented even in, in stories of the Bible of the three crosses up on the hill, you know, the, the Yeshua, the Christ in the middle, and the two thieves, you know, symbolized in that metaphor, the two thieves, the one thief that says, you know, for, for, forgive me, take me into your kingdom, that would be considered uh, Lucifer. And Lucifer, in the end, is, is forgiven and, you know, Christ says, yeah, she'll be with, my, with me in the kingdom of heaven. And the Aramonic influence is the thief on the other side who's saying, you know, why don't you save us? You know, why don't, you're, you're, you're just, you know, you're nothing. Why don't you save us all? You know, you're, it's trying to disprove that the Christ has any power. It's very grounded, very materialism, a very control, uh, a very manipulative force. And that, that's the force that does not go. <laughs> so even though the Luciferic influence can be, uh, is assisting a lot of people in their spiritual path, a Christic ascension, a pure ascension process, sticks to the middle path. And that's a solar beingness. It's the Christed path. And the Christic, again, that term, Christic, it comes from crystal. It's just crystal. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with a man. Um, even though Yeshua embodied that, and, and there were many others that embodied that, Krishna and Buddha, uh, embodied that Christic influence. It comes from crystal, and the, the crystalline consciousness is, it's Karaya Satahala, that's guardian, guardian material, but the Karaya Satahala is actually the, the tones that were made when that, that um, solar template was created. So that's where it comes from. It's crystal, crystalline, unity consciousness. It's all about consciousness. It's this return to this solar consciousness, the solar being the crystalline consciousness. So all of these terms mean the same thing. And whether you want to be completely dogma-free and like you don't like using the term Christ, we're all talking about the same thing. <laughs> it's you, if you want to talk about unity consciousness, this being the path of unity, fine. This being the crystalline path, fine. You can see this is a crystalline structure. The tree of life is symbolic of a crystal itself. So we're always following this path back to source. And it is a solar template. So we're reflecting the sun in everything that we do. Throughout this class, you're going to learn how to connect the solar beingness within the heart center, that spark, that source spark that leads us all the way back to source through the ascension column. You're going to continually work on expanding the heart center, the torus of the heart, which is a golden color, and the torus of the body fields, the torus around the body to expand to match the expansion of the higher self field. That is what all the expansion exercises are about and it is engaging with the solar template. And when you start working with the solar exercises, the solar meditations that are in the class, you're going to find that your heart will start operating as a sun, your own great central sun, the spark, the fractal of that within your own beingness. And that all of your expressions are going to align all of your expressions, all of your fields, all of your torus fields are going to start aligning so that you have a fifth, sixth dimensional self, seventh, eighth dimensional self, all of these fields start aligning through the ascension column and you start becoming your own little solar system, a reflection, a fractal of that solar template and that is where the solar cosmic Christed template comes from. It's actually a solar model. It resonates with gold. Gold again is our interface for connecting with source. So if you want to start wearing gold or start thinking gold and pulling in gold into your fields, it's an excellent way to reconnect with the solar beingness. We're going to be connecting with the sun itself, the great central sun itself, which is the center of the universe. It's where source pours in all of the information that's 
changing the universe right now. And we're going to find a connection with these paradise sons of God, that metaphor of son of God. It's all this solar template that's reflected all the way up through the archangelic realms, Mikael being the overlighter of that solar template. Mikael means he who is as God. It's a, it's a solar beingness. It's a fractalization of source. And if you can picture it as all of this is taking place in the mind of God. So the Taurus field of the universe is taking place in the mind of God. And the galactic template, fractalization, Taurus field, is taking place within the mind of the universe. It's all consciousness. So it's important to start viewing it as consciousness. When we're saying expand your fields, it's it's getting your the mindset and the emotions and the ego and everything out of the the rigor of thinking of it as form, 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 form. Where am I located? Where is my higher self? If you think of it as consciousness, all of it nesting within each other, all of it interweaving and connected that way, you won't get as kind of mind tripped on the idea of where exactly is the Taurus located for the galaxy as opposed to the solar system. It's all within, within the consciousness. It's all within the mind of God. The time-space continuum and the idea of different dimensional levels or location is all relative to your experience. And the more that you level up, the more you will lose the attachment to location, to trying to think of it in a linear way, trying to think of time in a linear way. It all becomes very fluid, very liquid. And uh, when, you're, when you're working with expansion, it's opening up, let, freeing yourself from thinking of it in a linear way and concentrating on consciousness, the shift in consciousness and becoming that sun. And then you're returning to this more solar beingness that unifies all levels, layers, and dimensions of you. So you don't have any more separation between the 3D, 4D self and the, the other levels. The sun, the middle, the heart center, the spark that goes all the way back to source, starts expanding and you can see how that becomes you become your own little solar system if you would consider like your fifth sixth dimensional uh, self is like uh, all these is like planets <laughs> you can see it reflects the same model as a solar system is all of your different dimensional selves are unified in this in this template this plane of consciousness and that it all connects back to source through the sun just like a solar system just like galactic center connects us back to the center of the universe, great central sun connects us, the universe, back to source. And it's all fractalization. So don't think of it as, where am I located? Think of it more as consciousness, as a solar template, as something that reunifies you, all the way back to pure source consciousness, which is our goal, is self-realization. Understanding that you are that fractal of source, and then, when your activations start coming in through the ascension column, everything's through the ascension column and the golden cord of light through the heart center, which we'll get into in the Taurus activations. But all of this information starts coming in, and when you start having your Christed activations, you'll feel that resonance is so strong, and it feels just like a, a field of light, a flow of light, a river of light continually flowing through the ascension column, and you lose your connection to the third, fourth dimensional realm altogether. The higher self overrides that because you've expanded your consciousness so there's no more need for an attachment to the lower le lower levels altogether. So when we work on non-attachment and getting over our ego and getting over our emotions and our materialism and our distraction by doing spiritual practices that spin us out or whatever. We're staying balanced, 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 balanced through the Christic ascension. And even though we have these forces pulling us, it doesn't mean you're choosing one or the other. You're choosing the middle path, which is service, service to others, service to your spiritual path, service to source as self, service to others, because you, you realize that you are that presence of source, so you, you won't have a choice. Eventually, service to others takes over. Service as 
source, divine service and divine will, which is a strong factor in, in uh, embodying the solar consciousness, divine will, you really feel that divine purpose of ascension, of the Christic path, of reunifying with source so that you can serve others, so that you can serve source in your highest capacity and really serve what your soul has planted you here to experience. And it's absolutely beautiful, but we do want to keep that balance. So yes, we're still grounded and honoring the somewhat material experience, the grounded experience of being here, but we're also not trying to escape consistently through spiritual practice that spin us off because that does warp your energy fields when you lean toward one, you lean toward the luciferic. If you're going into you know, um, psychedelics and things like that, it warps your energy fields because you're getting off balance, you're getting off center. If you're getting too materialistic and worried and fear and control and manipulation and getting into conspiracy and everything, it's going to lean you the other way. You know, you want to keep the tree upright and balanced and focused on your pure intention to embody that crystalline state of consciousness. The Solar Cosmic Christ and the Age of Ascension the Solar Cosmic Christ is a template for solar beingness in form. It directly reflects source consciousness. The highest levels in this universe are represented by Archangel Mikael, Christed beings, the great central sun, the stars, suns, solaris. It is all fractalizations from the top down from source all the way through these different forms right into our own beingness as humans. Esoteric teachings show us the cosmic reflection of this natural order reflected in the Christed templates. Archangel Mikael is the archangel of the sun. He represents divine will, the divine order of the universe coming through as divine will as a solar force. Archangel Mikael is reflected in Archangel Michael, Melchizedek, Moses. The tales of these solar beingness are reflected in the tales of India with Krishna, Egypt, the Kabbalah, Himalayan Buddhist teachings, and esoteric Christianity. All of these reflect the solar cosmic Christed beingness in form and those teachings that have been passed down throughout the eras. It is a solar force, the Pentecostal experience, the Holy Spirit breathing into the crown. This is about that fire or the solar beingness or that higher energy coming into the ascension column. As mentioned earlier, it is about the middle pillar, the center of that tree of life, the ascension column, the column of glory, and staying on that path of balance so you are bringing source into the grounded experience and marrying higher and lower self, merging higher and lower levels right in form. That is the challenge of this particular kind of ascension. Now the Taurus of the heart field has a golden cord that's connected all the way back to source. The spark within the heart center is that source spark where the tube and the vesica Pisces create that torus field, the toroidal field that links us all the way back to source. It is a solar force, so it does resonate with gold. Now the Christic ascension follows the tree of life, the Michaelic path, the middle path of a balanced trinity of spirit, soul, and form. We are completely balanced when we, when we follow this Christic ascension. Now, the Christ, the symbolic Christ, is the perfected human in the center of the column. And whether you call it crystalline consciousness or unity consciousness, it does not matter. The solar cosmic Christ, it's all the same thing. And we are following this middle path of balance, so we're not leaning too far into a ecstatic process of constant spiritual practice, and we're not leaning far into materialism 
uh, and control and manipulation where there is no God, we're balancing both of those into a balanced Christed path where we are experiencing source right through form and being in service to source through that rather than getting distracted by either of these two forces. And it's not one force or the other, it's its own thing in the middle, that Christic path. Now, self-absorption is detrimental to the path. We want to keep in service and balance as source in form. So when we get too self-absorbed with our spirituality, we forget about humanity, and or we get too self-absorbed with materialism, both of those forces can be detrimental to our path. So we want to make sure that we're keeping in service and keeping balanced to create this source and form experience. Now the Christic Ascension opens up the Ascension Column or the toroidal tube, the tube in the middle of the torus, greatly amplified by balance, purity of intent, willpower, again, that divine will, that Archangel Michael influence that overlights all of this process, and sticking to the middle path. Service to others is key. Being here, now, actively assisting rather than focusing on selfish gain or self-centered process where it's only me and my spirituality ignoring other humans. Those are just distractions. Yes, we delve into esoteric practices or we delve into very grounded work in, in some moments during our life stream, but we end up with this path of balance where it's not one or the other. We're sticking to the middle. Now, the Christed state is unique. It's a unique crystallized form, like snowflakes, each individual expression of source. Source doesn't create two of anything. So we have this freedom to express ourselves through this crystalline form. So even though we have these incredible teachers and these leaders that m many religions have been formed out of, out of their practices or out of their existence on the planet, however, we want to make sure that we're honoring our own unique expression rather than imitating a Yeshua or imitating a Buddha or imitating a Krishna. Yes, we use them as guides and masters. It does become a co-creative process, though, as we accelerate and move up in our mastery. So we do have more freedom to express ourselves on this free will planet as we explore this, but we want to make sure that our Christed state is unique and not just imitating one of the masters because it will enable you to find your unique skills and your unique gifts as you move along. Humans may express pure love and freedom even more than higher beings who are locked into a particular kind of service. And it's interesting because as you level up, you actually get less freedom as you go up in the dimensions because your service, your consciousness becomes very unified with other beings and other soul groups and other dimensions. And you end up with these giant projects where you are assigned specific tasks and assigned to do specific things as an initiate or as a master. And you actually have less free will than you do down here in density when everything is is uh, kind of buried in illusion and you have these free will choices to do whatever you want. So enjoy it while you got it. <laughs> but, but humans may express pure love and freedom through that Christed state, through this dimensional shift in a much more unique way than actually like an archangel would. An archangel is assigned to specific tasks or a galactic is assigned to specific tasks. So enjoy your freedom and enjoy your creativity while you have this human expression. It's very unique. Mastery initiates are celebrated. Your free will choice is respected every step of the way with the Christed path. So as you level up and get more and more activations, you're always going to get like a strong activation and then it will back off a little bit so that you always have the free choice. Would you like to continue? Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do this? And your free will choice is respected every step of the way, which is why when we use the so it is or free will choices such as that, we want to keep 
reminding ourselves of what we're creating because we always have the choice to uncreate things. We always have the choice to back off, stall in our process. These, these things happen. So it's our consistent engagement with that path that, uh, that is celebrated. Every time that we have a leveling up, it is celebrated. And then you always get the choice, do you want to move forward? So this is something that we're consistently engaging with on the Christed path. Commitment is huge. Divine will is connected to Archangel Mikael. And Archangel Mikael is a force. Even if you don't want to consider him as a being or avoid any kind of dogmatic attachment to a, a religion, it's the force of divine will. It's the force of source coming through as this fiery solar presence and often he's depicted with the, the shield and the sword because it is this divine will. And divine will will take over in your Christic path. And that's a good way to demonstrate, to do like a little check-in with your process is, am I feeling that divine will, the desire to move forward, the desire to change things, the desire to serve source? And if so, you know that you're connecting with that force of Archangel Mikael, that solar force that is very much in service, not destroying things, but it's very much in service to source, to love, to humanity, to the overarching project of Gaia becoming a more solar entity herself. Now, through this activity of divine will, we are creating this etheric field of moral activity around the body of ourselves and collectively around the body of the planet. So there is a sh the shift that is going on dimensionally involves creating this more moral activity, eliminating the Aramonic influence, eliminating the Luciferic in influence, and embodying this more Christic path of morality and service and love and knowing, uh, engaging with our, our divine discernment of what is in the highest interest of all concerned. Now, there is no judgment on past behavior or mistakes if it is your genuine will to correct past mistakes and improve. There is absolute absolution and forgiveness with faith that is real. Forgiveness is real. And that absolution can come at any point that someone engages with a, a genuine will to correct their path or to improve themselves. And the higher levels express thought without words. So part of that commitment, part of that divine will in everything is an energetic. It's going to express without words, direction, and divine will. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it as a force rather than uh, kind of chattering on about what you should and shouldn't do. You're actually going to feel it as a force through your ascension column and within your heart. It is divine love, unconditional, and it does have absolution and forgiveness, and it does create this divine will to move forward and participate in the bigger project of ascension. Now, during the age of Mikael, there are 144,000 master initiates. You may have heard that number a lot. There's 144,000 master initiates that have reincarnated. They are masters who, in the past, we have gone through mystery schools or paths of mastery, engaging with that in order to assist in transforming consciousness. So we all had this agreement that we're all going to come back during the shift in consciousness and incarnate all at the same time to move us into this age of ascension, to move us into this dimensional shift. So that's where that 144,000 comes in. Now, in addition to that 144,000, we have the Melchizedek Order, we have other mystery school initiates, secondary and tertiary initiates that have all come back, that are all participating right now to move the collective forward into the new paradigm. And an awakened master gets very busy. And you can always ask for a rest period if you are 
one of those masters where you're engaging with divine will and suddenly you've got all these missions and these different service projects and all of this you can always ask for a rest period but know that you know divine will does kind of take over with the with the christic consciousness classic stages of mastery now this is straight out of like a mystery school protocol just for your reference Typically, it begins with deep self-examination. The first step is always taking a look within. Suddenly, you're realizing there's more to my life than what the external is presenting to me. And you start doing a self-examination of who am I? Why am I here? What's going on with my spirit? What's going on with my relationship with God, with Source? And you start doing this deep self-examination. The second step is spiritual study. You start pursuing your studies as a as as an initiate. So you start looking at different texts, you start looking at different schools, you start looking at different books and programs and start really delving into the study of spirit. The third step, you start doing service work. You start taking what it is that you have learned that you're starting to accumulate and not coming out as a guru or anything like that, but you start doing service work. Like, I'm going to start spreading and sharing what I'm learning with, either with friends or with bigger groups, or you start participating in the external world with the things that you have learned through your spiritual study. And service work, of course, is a huge key to completing mastery because all of these stages have to be complete in order for you to graduate, in order for you to move on into a state of complete mastery. So service work, suddenly you have the drive that divine will starts stepping in and you want to help others and you want to assist others who are on a spiritual path or you want to assist others through the heart. And this leads us into step four, which is heart illumination. This stage is powerful, where all of a sudden your heart is opening up, you're starting to have this etheric substance, what they call the etheric rose light, starts rising up into the cave of Christos, into the pineal pituitary in the brain, and it starts unifying the heart and the pineal and the crown, so that you start interpreting everything through the heart. You start living your life through this beautiful heart-based intention, this beautiful unconditional love. That's when we learn unconditional love. There's a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of gratitude that goes with that stage. It's absolutely beautiful. The fifth stage is becoming a representative of the tribe. And in a classic mystery school protocol, this is an important step because you're starting to speak on behalf of your brothers and sisters, not as a guru, not as a leader, but your 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 voice and your ability to speak up without fear, without trying to control or manipulate anybody, not doing like a big mind trip on that, but becoming a representative of your own group of humanity. Doesn't have to be a big thing, can just be local, can just be your own family, but you're starting to find your voice and you're learning how to become a representative in your community or globally of what it is you believe in, what it is that you've learned, what it is that you've you've learned about the heart. And again, the heart comes first so that it's not becoming a representative of the, of the tribe for uh, guru reasons or trying to control, manipulate, dominate people, anything like that. After you start speaking on behalf of the tribe, the next step is the solar or the Christed state because you are unifying all levels, layers, and dimensions of you with your voice, with the heart, with the service work, with the spiritual study, with the self-examination. All of these things are coming together, and it can take years for people to get to this stage. This is not something that you do in a week. This is something that you do over the process of sometimes several incarnations, and sometimes within one incarnation, like what we're doing now, we're recalling all of these steps that we've taken in the past through mystery schools. So the solar or the Christed state is unifying all of your levels, layers, and dimensions, all of your expressions with, it's it's all the, the 12 expressions of self, the template, unifying back into the heart center, the solar beingness, that spark of source, back into divine mother, father, God, reunifying 
all the way back to source. So you're reunifying all of the 12 into the one that symbolic 12 into the one presents again in this state. And it's absolutely beautiful because it does become very autonomous. It becomes your beingness. You become the Christ. And the Christ, again, is a template. It's not a being. It's a, it's a force, a divine will, a solar presence, the presence of source on the planet through you. You become that conduit. And then the final step of mastery would be reunifying with source. So after we are complete in this Christed state and we've done our service and we've lived out our mission and everything, we then have the opportunity to reunify with source fully and completely. And whether that is in an ascended state or whether that is recalling all of your beingness back to, to reunify with source, all the form, all of the expressions, all of the life streams, everything, we then have the opportunity to return to source and deliver all that information back to source and then become something else. You know, some of us want to ascend into stars or, or solar beingnesses or become part of galaxies or move on to different universes. It depends on what your, what your, your personal life path is about. But we do have the opportunity to reunify with source after we achieve, after we achieve the solar or the Christed state. So all of these do come in order, and you can see even in your own life streams how this plays out when you're following these classic mastery stages. Thought forms are one of the things that our lower levels tend to cling to. So during this process, what we're doing is we're cultivating an inner positivity to override negativity. As was mentioned earlier, the Essenes mentioned that two things cannot occupy the same space. So what we're doing is we're stopping thoughts midstream, changing them, shifting them, clearing them, and parenting the mind to change the flow, the neural pathways, creating new neural pathways within the brain so that the brain doesn't keep firing in the same direction of negativity and, oh my gosh, and doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. We're actually creating new pathways within the brain by stopping our thoughts midstream, by clearing it if it's an emotion, by changing the thought and turning it into Po seeing the positive in the situation, parenting the mind about, hey, we're not thinking about that anymore, or what is the purpose of thinking about this anymore if you're getting into a lot of repetitive thoughts or repetitive activities or worries or concerns. A lot of behavior changes happen at this level because the behaviors, too, are um, firing in the same way. So you want to make sure that you're consistently changing those neural pathways and it, it is a bit of a struggle at the at first and then it becomes the new norm your new behavior becomes the new norm and then you keep leveling up leveling up leveling up you strengthen that by practicing intuition by being cognizant by being conscious throughout the day practicing with your intuition your inspiration, your visualization, consistently creating these new experiences because the brain cannot tell the difference between a real or an imagined circumstance or reality. So when you're visualizing, you're actually creating new things for the brain to cling to. When you're practicing with your intuition, you're becoming more conscious of your higher self, the inspiration you're creating, you're inspiring yourself to do different behavior to create different thought forms. Now, activation of the Christ, all of these methods have purpose. So when it comes to activating the Christ within you, all of the methods in Ascension Path have purpose. They are to open pathways of light within the body and the energy fields and release the lower level entanglement or the limitations that you have created for yourself. It will become second nature, and you will feel stronger. You're going to morph into your higher skills. All of these pathways, and that's the practices, all the mastery skills, all the little tidbits of information, are to keep you more conscious and to create a more conscious experience from moment to moment, from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep and even in your sleep state. 
all these pathways that we're creating are key to allowing the Christ to step forth. It's not a mental exercise. The Christ is a real vibration. It's something that needs to be practiced in order to become second nature. It's not a mental exercise of, oh, no, I'm going to visualize myself as the Christ. The grounded pathways that are presented are so that you can embody the Christed state. It's not about escapism. It's about embodying that Christed state. Here's the big how. All of these steps in Ascension Path will teach you the how, but let's go through a few of them just for emphasis. Opening the Taurus and the Ascension Column allows the higher light in, and you have many exercises in Ascension Path about opening the Taurus and Ascension Column. The solar light is Christ light. It's not merely sunlight, not just the sun, Solaris. That is the visual. The Christ light is a natural frequency of pure love. And there's many forms and many delivery systems, but it all comes from one source. So whether you're looking at the sun, doing the sun gazing, laying in the sun, bringing the, the solar light through visualization into the heart center, all of that is going to assist in bringing that Christ light into your consciousness, your body vehicle, and your fields in order to make that transformation into reunifying with source right through the form. So our closest example of the pure Christ light is the sun. It is that one source. The Christ light expansion ex exercises activate DNA codes within your cells, within your blood, within your bones, within your energy fields. It activates the heart center and the Christed templates within you. So every time that you do the solar meditations, every time that you're welcoming forth your Christ, welcoming in the Christ light, that expansion exercise where you're opening up to the crystalline structures, activate, crystalline structures, activate. Again, you're changing and, and conditioning the brain to do that automatically. You're teaching the body to do something brand new, to evolve. And the impulse to involve is already present on the planet. You just need to engage with it. We're extremely supported by the energy fields of the planet and the amount of photonic light that's flowing in and all the support for this ascension is available to you. You just need to engage with it. So we're teaching the body, teaching the mind, teaching the emotions and the ego and the body vehicle how to engage with all of the support that we have available right now. Continual practice opens the solar source energy and the Michaelic path, proving your genuine pursuit of divine will. So the more that you do this, the more that the higher realms, the universe, the magnetics will assist you. It does have to be genuine and a relaxed, not like a, please give me this, please give me this. It's from a relaxed, okay, here we go, consistent pursuit from the heart, not the mind. Consistent pursuit from the heart attracts spiritual guides, supportive beings, the consciousness or the conscious or unconscious support, whether it happens in dream state or whether it uh, happens in your waking life does, does not matter. It's a vibrational match. So when you have that genuine, relaxed, yes, yes, this is what I want to do, and you're not wavering on your path, you will receive that divine higher level support. Again, they're not going to do it for you because this is a path of divine will. You're proving that you have the willpower to go through this. And it takes very little to show them that, yes, I'm going to do it. And you prove it to yourself. You engage with the practices. You engage with spiritual activity. And the universe answers you. This is a mastery path level engagement at that point. So engage with your own mastery. You know, own it. Own your mastery. Own that that you, even if you don't believe that you've been one of the 144,000 or the hundreds of thousands of secondary and tertiary initiates, even if you don't believe that or don't know that or can't connect to it, you can always step up into a path of mastery. But master, mastery involves staying conscious all the time. 
Now, it is Source's divine will to provide this experience here and now, which is why we are so supported. But it is your individual choice to engage with the Christic Ascension. When you resonate with divine will rather than personal will, it becomes a very authentic service to others and to Source. So rather than just kind of covering your own butt and you, you just want to get out of here or you just want to prove to yourself that you can really do this or whatever, your perspective is going to change. You're going to start resonating with divine will and the higher perspective of the overarching mission of ascension as you go through mastery. And that's when you're really going to feel that mastery stepping up. You're really going to feel the the master stepping forward because you're going to feel that divine will. And again, that's not trying to control or manipulate the situation. It's a force of love, of source, of heart. It's, it's very beautiful and very strong. So when you surrender to the force of love, loving thy neighbor as thyself, loving yourself unconditionally, and loving source unconditionally and everything around you with all of your beingness, that is mastery. That is unconditional love through and through, no matter what. Of course, you're using your discernment when it comes to whether or not things are the, in the highest interest, not in the highest interest, but the, the force that goes through that is always love and patience and mercy, and forgiveness, and gratitude, and joy. It's all of these beautiful faith, you know, the, the, the force of faith itself is, uh, is part of our ascension process as well. It is based on faith. So it's beautiful. It's, you'll feel it. You'll feel that mastery stepping forth as a force of love. Service, of course, is key. It is one of those steps in the mastery process. Service to others and to source is the goal. It's surrendering. It's not being engaged with worry and concern and survival any longer. You will have to surrender that at some point. At some point, you're going to have to give up the goat. You're going to have to give up that the, the worry and concern about what other people are going to think or how am I going to do this. You'll find little tests along the path of Okay, this is one of those points where I'm just going to I'm going to have to give it up. I'm in order to move forward, you're going to have to give up the worry and the concern about the external and just follow your heart. It might feel karmic at first, some of the challenges that come up because you're paying off debts to other people and everything in the beginning of your journey or paying off karmic debt or balancing your own systems or tr learning to trust yourself just to get over the fears of the lower self getting over the fear of course is huge sh shifting from fear into love and then eventually nothing is going to make sense ex except service your heart will take over the true christ is not disconnected it can feel transcendent but you you will be guided to share that, to share that joy, to share that love. It's not disconnected from humanity. It's not like you're going to become the Christ over in a cave and then, you know, hooray for you and everybody else, you know, can burn. It's not about that. You won't be able to keep it to yourself. So that's a good litmus test for where your Christed path is going. If you just cannot keep the joy and the love to yourself and you you feel that overwhelming need to share love with others and that is service sharing love with others whatever i can do how go in your own unique expression what can i do what can i do anything i can do will be great you won't be able to keep it to yourself so that's a good litmus test for where you are in your christed path if you're just in give mode if you're in sharing mode and not sacrificing yourself. You're not being a martyr and not being a savior like, oh my gosh, I have to help everybody uh, because, oh, these poor fools. It's not like that. It's the middle path. It's grounded. It's helping others. It's growing your yourself and your own service and making sure that you are supporting yourself in that path as well so that you don't burn yourself out, so that you don't 
completely uh, destroy yourself and martyr yourself on, on behalf of another brother or sister. It's not about that. It's not disconnected. It's the middle path. It's grounded. It's balance. But you won't be able to help yourself after a while when you get into the heart. You just love everybody so much. You're just like, yes, whatever I can do. And making sure that your, your services are honored as well. Balance. It's beautiful. Okay, activation of higher clairvoyance comes into play. At some point in your journey, the cave of Christos, which is this area, the third ventricle of the brain, this area in the brain, it's also called the cave of Brahma, where the pituitary and the pineal uh, connect, there's this cerebral spinal fluid that starts to activate. You might see a rose or a magenta-colored light swirl during this phase, and it just means that your heart and your pineal and your pituitary and your crown are starting to connect in this beautiful, unique way. It means your ascension column is wide open and that you're going to start transforming into this unique unifying with the higher dimensions. It's beyond the classic 4D channeling or spirit guides or connecting with disincarnates. It becomes a thought-free clairvoyance, claircognizant state of being. You're evolving into a sense-free clairvoyant connection. So it's not going to have a lot of words, a lot of chatter. It's going to be a pure connection to source, which is some, some people refer to it as the stillness is within the heart, but this cave of Christos activation means that your higher level clairvoyance is going to start uh, coming online, and the pineal can get very activated, very active. During that time, you might see a, a rapid-fire visions for a while. This has been happen happening to me lately. Very rapid-fire visions. Some of them you might understand. Some of them you might not understand. Uh, it's But you will find that it doesn't matter. You're just watching it. You're just observing it. You're feeling into it. And you just kind of let it be. There's a very calm quality to that stage. We're like, okay, okay, this is opening up and you'll feel your heart opening and your connection to source is starting to strengthen. So your connection to higher level spirit guides will start uh, coming into play. And especially a connection to Archangel Mikael uh, as that force of source or connection to the sun where it's more light packet information that you you just feel it, you understand it on a claircognizant level. Sometimes it involves vision, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, this is something to look for as far as your spiritual progress because you'll start experiencing this, and it's very beautiful. Gold is a solar frequency. It's also one of the basis of our DNA. Gold is a biologically balanced light. It represents the trinity the spirit soul form trinity of the Christ consciousness. It's a good activator for the Christ consciousness, which is why we put it into our fields, which is why we meditate on it as a solar force, a golden force, calling in the golden light into the heart torus. The heart torus resonates with that field of gold. The cord coming out of the heart resonates with gold as we ascend because it is. it carries a frequency of an interface with the Christ consciousness. Even with using platinum ray, diamond light, etc., use gold periodically to activate the DNA source codes within you because they do re reverberate with gold. They resonate with gold. Keeping gold, actual physical gold, in your fields assists with connecting with the solar force. If you have pieces of gold or a gold chain or something like that, keep it in your field in order to assist you in, in connecting with the solar light. You can receive solar light through the ascension column. That's why we're doing solar meditation, sun gazing, sun bathing, things like that. It's bringing in that golden light. And even though the frequency of the sun is blasting a more uh, diamond or platinum looking light, the gold within the vibrational fields of the divine human within the Christed human is going to activate your DNA. So make sure that you use that every once in a while. Biocommunication is another 
how-to when it comes to the Christic path. You're having a fully conscious interaction with the elementals, Gaia, the body vehicle which belongs to Gaia, and the light body. Biocommunication connects us with the natural forces of earth, of that very earthy, natural, elemental aspect. It's the honoring of Divine Mother through honoring and assisting Gaia, Sophia, the Divine Feminine aspect, again, that background energy for everything, all that is, that has been long forgotten. Return of the Divine Feminine is the return of that awareness of interacting with the the, the birthing force, the background energy for all that is, the background en energy of creation. And while it's beautiful to work with the kingdoms, don't forget to honor humans as well as part of that biocommunication. So we are interacting with the elementals, we're interacting with the kingdoms, the animals, the plant kingdoms, with Gaia, and also interacting with humans as part of that biocommunication. So when we're interacting with the natural forces of the universe, of the galaxy, of the solar system, of the planetary consciousness, and everything, all that is, there is this biocommunication that is part of the Christ where we become very connected to the kingdoms and very aware of that. So be very aware of biocommunication and again, practicing with plants, pla practicing with the kingdoms, uh, every time that you're out in nature, you become part of that natural, organic interrelationship that is the Divine Feminine. When you're working with Gaia, it's Gaia's destiny to be a spiritual son. She is going to become a more solar entity, a home to Christed beings as a unique place for exploring spirit that is her destiny. The solar templates within Gaia and human DNA activate within this conscious ascension process that we're going through right now. And we are creating these new etheric structures around Gaia to assist. It's called the crystalline grid. When we're working in service, love, and integrity, we created this crystalline grid system that surrounds the planet. And when it is strong enough, Gaia will actually use this incoming light, as she's doing right now, to transform into that more solar consciousness, just as we are using it to transform into a more solar consciousness. The grounded grids become more solar as we accelerate the shift, and that's been one of the tricky things that lightworkers have been working on, is we've been creating these new grounded grid systems, which are now activating or concentrating on a more solar beingness in order to get Gaia's grounded grid systems to merge with the higher grid systems, the crystalline grid, just as we are merging our lower energetic bodies with our higher energetic bodies in those toroidal merging, the expansion exercises, it's the exact same thing that's happening with Gaia. So we're expanding the, the Gaia fields into this crystalline grid field in order to, for Gaia to expand into her more solar beingness. It is as above, so below. It's the same thing we're doing with our bodies. It does resonate with gold and the solar light, which is why gold has been used in so many ceremonies and, pyra and pyramids and temples. Gold is consistently resonating with this solar light, this solar force that we're moving into and creating this grid system, creating these structures that hold a more solar force and assist Gaia in her becoming a more solar uh, a more solar beingness and assisting us in becoming uh, more Christed solar beings as well. Ascension column work is another how-to. We open the crown, we open the gateway of the heart, we do our expansion exercises, we do the ascension column breath, we make the solar connection, we make the connection to Gaia, we open the human heart grid connection, and then we use our body and use our hands to make sure that we are opening these toroidal fields. And there are several exercises in Ascension Path and guided meditations to assist you in doing all of these. And again, the Ascension Column is your connection all the way back to Source. It is the tube within the Taurus field. It is your connection to Gaia, 
to the heart center so that you, be, you can become that pure conduit between source and Gaia, between the higher levels and lower levels, between your own higher self and source and the ground itself. Advanced initiate work can include sacred geometry creation, actually creating thought forms, creating sacred geometry in your fields or in the planet or around your sacred space. We're consistently engaging with these pathways. Each moment becomes conscious, the conscious choice to engage with that. We're doing gate work. We're doing service work. We're working with the elementals, working with Gaia, working with humans at service to and with others amplifies your light. So make sure that you're engaging with other people as you ascend because it greatly accelerates your progress to work with other people. And it also amplifies your own light when you work with others. So if, you're, if you've been in the cave for too long, make sure that you're stepping out as we uh, complete these resurrection, resurrection phases in 2016 and fully step into the light with others. And the more that you work with other people, the stronger your light becomes. Keep track of your progress and your experiences. This is part of the advanced initiate work. This is not beginner stuff. Keep track of your visions. Keep track of your dreams, events. All of these synchronicities are like puzzle pieces. Your higher teams are always looking for those who are dedicated and willing to do this work. And that's how you show them, by being conscious, by doing the work, by light grounding it, bringing it into this reality, by writing it down and doing these practices. Stay conscious in your clairvoyant visions. Don't just trip out and go into these visions where you're just spinning out and you can't remember what happened. Self-awareness is important. The new clairvoyance has this new etheric center as part of human evolution, part of our, our evolving into these higher beings is going beyond brain thinking to a sense-free thinking, this natural, consistent connection to higher faculties. There's a higher perspective of the wholeness of the cosmos, the wholeness, the overarching project of ascension. You experience a timeless perception of events and possibilities where you're not so tied to when, when are things going to happen. You have this higher perspective of the bigger picture of ascension, the bigger role of Gaia, the bigger role of your own participant, your own experience as a participant in this giant project of, of ascension and evolution of our solar system. Light work and gate work and grid work to connect with the spirit of Gaia, the sun, and to amplify the energy fields of the planet, you, you will learn to feel and play with the subtler, subtler realms. Experiment and play with this often because it does it launch you into this higher level of mastery and you learn more and more about your skills. Receive these thought form packets rather than words or lower entities to telling you what to do or a lot of people get addicted to that. They told me this, they told me that. Start to learn how to receive these light packets rather than just trying to channel words or getting a, a, a more linear experience. You're going to activate your higher etheric body through the solar light so it becomes a more solar experience, a more connected experience, and you relieve yourself of the lower channeling experience into to go into this Christed state, this pure Christed, Christed state. There is a central point at the heart center which operates at source spark, operates as a scalar energetic. That is your zero point. It flows in both directions to create an energy field of great power. The Taurus field creates great power and when you focus on that, you're going to align all expressions at your heart center point. And rather than collapsing into that, you'll find that you actually expand that energy center through the work. You're opening a Christed gateway through the source spark at the heart center. The heart torus expansion actually 
occurs when you pull your focus within. You'll find that it's bi-directional. The more that you focus within the heart center, the more that the heart torus expands. As you get into a more advanced stage, you'll find that the more that you focus within, the wider your fields start to open up. It causes an expansion of field, and that's when you know you're really getting into that scalar energetic because you will find the universe within you. you start experiencing a connection with all that is through the focus within, through the focus on the heart center. It's really beautiful. How do you know the Christed state is stepping forth? You'll have a mastery posture. Your communication will change. Your thoughts, words, deeds, service will all honor everything. You won't be able to cut things down. You won't be able to judge things. You won't be able to experience negativity in situations the way that you used to. There's an overwhelming sensation in the heart that is pure, unconditional love. You will have a desire to abandon everything for service, for love. Nothing else is going to matter. Your perspective shifts to the global, the galactic, the universal service to divine will. will. And then you do have this higher realm collaboration, which uh, becomes seamless. You won't have a separation between you and the higher realms any longer. You won't have a me and them experience. There won't be a they are telling me this. It becomes a we, an I am, a pure I am experience that overrides all of the the lower separation. There's a sense-free clairvoyance that starts to present that you won't understand at first and The mind will not have a desire to understand it. Silence is golden. The stillness becomes a well for you to go back and draw energy from. That stillness, even even though you have this desire to express it and everything, there is a, a stillness, a knowing, an overriding knowing of self as source that becomes that self-realization. The biocommunication and the natural connection to the kingdoms will present the natural connection to Gaia, that beautiful divine will service, becomes a unique expression of your skills as they present and evolves with this state. The lower self surrenders to the higher state in this advanced level of embodiment. There's an incredible joy and an incredible freedom which begins to present. And it might be an hour, it might be a day or two at first, and then it becomes a week, and then it becomes a month, and then it becomes so consistent that it completely overrides the lower worries and the lower self and the lower self-experience as we fully embody this Christed state. Here are a few reminders Practice meditation and the active ascension process. Very important. The conscious pathway creation. Exercise and play with your energy fields. You know, don't sit around uh, participating in low vibe activity. You're going to have this desire to exercise and play with your energy fields, not the chakra system, but the toroidal fields with sacred geometry, playing with light, playing with color, playing with different forms, seeing what you can create in your energy fields. All of this is going to start presenting. The care of body, mind, and spirit as surface to source, you're going to recognize that you're going to want to take care of yourself as an act of honoring and serving source. It becomes a different, it, you free yourself from the lower dynamic of, oh, I, I don't want to be manipulated. I don't want to be controlled. I want to take care of myself. I want to look younger. I want to uh, be in service to my higher self, and suddenly it becomes a service to source, merely taking care of yourself, becomes divine service. I hope that's clear. Your consistent choices and self-correcting on your path of ascension, consistently choosing the higher light, the higher vibration, the higher experience. And again, in the beginning, 
it's a bit of work and then it becomes second nature like oh what am i doing i'm i'm let's let's choose the higher road let's choose the higher service let's choose the higher light the higher communication and i don't mean communication as like uh, higher communication as in higher communication with higher realms i'm talking about the way that you interact with other humans as higher forms of communication honoring the people around you honoring the situation stepping forth as the master and saying you know what i would like to provide my higher perspective on this or from the heart you know not as a guru or a teacher or i know more than you but as a true higher form of communication as a true uh, representation of the Christ saying, brothers and sisters, what if, you know, consistently providing a solution for people's problems or a different perspective from the heart can greatly assist people? And again, it's not our, our worry or our concern, people's reaction to that. You know, they'll, they'll come around or they might not come around. It's merely offering the higher perspective or love, or support in the situation. What people, it's not our, our choice as to what the external does with that information, but it's the choice through the heart to be there, to be that presence. It's not a path of strict control. Please embrace the freedom that comes with this path that's being revealed in this lifetime. Don't try to control it. Don't try to manipulate or, or have this ascetic strict path of, oh, I have to do this out of worthiness or, or trying to please source or whatever, that's going to be natural. Of course, you're going to want to please source. The more that your heart is open, the more that you want to share that with source, with your brothers and sisters, with everything around you. But it's not a path of strict control. It's, it's mercy, it's gratitude, it's love, it's staying open And you're going to find that genuine desire within you to be of service, to be that Christed representation. And again, the Christ is a state of beingness. It's a template for a solar state of beingness that is in divine service, consistent unconditional love, consistent presence of source on earth. And it's absolutely beautiful. (laughs) So please remember that you are the Christ Own this as your true consciousness. Own that state of mastery. You are that being. It's just a matter of welcoming it forth. Many blessings.